VR video tutorial on the susceptible infected model. This is a simple two category or two compartmental model. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to model it really quick. This will be a series of these. Uh, we're going to start each model on their own video, so it'll be nice and easy. All right. So the first thing we're going to need is some initial values. Where are we? And this is the U.S. population right now, uh, or approximately. And here is the infected person. So we only have two categories or two states that they could be in. So what we need to do is update this. So the way we're going to do this is, uh, if you remember from the previous videos, we are going to take where we're at now, and we're just going to say, well, where are we now? That's where, This is where we're going to be. Where are we now? Minus, then we had a parameter in here. And we're going to multiply that by I0, S0, times S0. And I0 gets updated as well. So this is the basic structure. Now we're going to have to change a th few things on this. Okay, so remember this is like accounting. So these people are going to move to this group. So this swaps groups. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this just a little bit, but we can see how this will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make S-O-N and I-O-N. So this is for now. Okay, so this is going to be S-O, and this is a way to keep from having to do all of the looping, or not looping, but all of the indexes and subscripts and things like that. It helps us avoid all of that information, or having to deal with it. So then I need to say, and here, and and here, and the reason I need to do this is once I've updated S-0 here, it goes to the next one. Okay, and that will cause uh, the accounting not to work. Okay, so here now everything lines up. This is now, then we're going to say what's now, and this is where we're going to go. Okay, this is how this basically works. So we'll put this in a for loop, and let's just say we go out 100, and we'll see what the dynamics look like. Now we're going to need a parameter alpha here, which I will put in here in just a second, and we also need a container to hold our results. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to tab this in. So the first thing is a, uh, a container. So I'm going to call it out one, and I'm just going to make it a matrix filled with zeros. It's going to have two columns. Why two columns? Because we have two states to be in, zero or uh, S and I. So there's going to be two of those, and the number of rows is going to be 100 because that's how many we have here. Right, we're going to loop through 100 times, so we're going to record where those go. Then I'm going to do out one, and I'm going to say in the ith row first position, I'm going to put in here my SO. And then in my out one second position in the first row, second column, I'm going to put I0. Okay, this will set us up. Now all we need to do is come up with an alpha parameter, so the parameter, and and later we're going to have lots more parameters. And we're going to pick up from this one, so I'll, I'll refer you to go back to this one so we can add on, because we want to keep modifying the model instead of rebuilding the model. All right, so we have alpha 1, and I'm going to say this is something like 1 over... And I'll put a whole bunch of zeros in here. It needs to be something on the order of this times this, right? So something that big. And let's see here. I probably should add another zero or two. And once I have this set up, then I can plot this. So I can plot here, let's see, S, well, out one, the first column. And we're going to do one through 100. And then we can plot, we'll make it a type, equals L. And then we'll do lines 1 to 100 out to 1. I can type this. Column 2, and we'll make the color here red. And this should give us something to stare at. Now, this is going to cause some problems, by the way. We're going to have to go back and fix one thing on this, and it might blow up right away. We'll find out. Yep, blew up. See here, we've gone, like, massively big. And the reason is, is that we didn't say that 
look, we're taking people out of here. And we can just ad nauseum take people out of here. So what we need to do is we need to say, well, we want the maximum of this and zero. So we need to fix that. And you can add it to the next one as well. It's not as important because we're adding to it. Okay, so, but you can put it in here just for consistency's sake. And let's add another zero onto this thing. And we'll run the whole thing. Now, when you run this, you always have to start at the initial values because we're writing over them. So if I run all of this again, now here we get the picture that we were expecting. For a long time, there's very, very few, or most people are susceptible, very few infected. And then here at around day 60, things really start taking off. And then by 80, they've tapered off. So people have switched from one group all the to the other group. And this is the susceptible infected model. Pretty easy to do. We're going to learn some more tricks on how to make this better. And ultimately, our goal is to be able to modify or to be able to model the COVID-19 data, which uh, will come up reasonably soon. I'll have an explanation of that and how to use it. But first, we need to get through a model that actually has the components in it or compartments in it that that data has for us. All right, so we'll stop here, and I'll see you in the next video.